probably one of the most important things that you have to know when you're looking at clinical studies, and that would be status, is what's the difference between a relative risk and an absolute risk? Now, most people have no idea what I'm talking about here, but it's a really fundamental issue with understanding a clinical study. Right. And I've asked 50 fellow doctors, I'm just you know having a cup of coffee after a meeting or whatever, just as a kind of say, I'm just doing a little survey on this, and, and I'd just uh, be like, like you to tell me and explain to me the difference between absolute and relative risk. And I'll just tell you is none of them knew. None of them have even really heard of such a thing. This is, I'm thinking, this is a fundamental statistical value that you have to understand or everything that comes out of your mouth is gibberish. <laughs> well, precisely, and, and yet, um, and yet they're confident and... And, and start telling me, oh, well, statins are wonderful, and I've seen this I've seen this study, and what about these studies? But if you actually nail them down and say, well, which of the studies is it that most convinced you, and what was the data that you saw that most convinced you? None of them will ever be able to give you a single name of a single study or any of the data that no, they've seen. It's just, it's it's... just like, um, you don't know anything about this area, and yet you're telling me you don't know, I don't know what I'm talking about. Furthermore, you don't know anything about this area that you haven't learned from a drug rep. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, that is a problem, isn't it? Or, or guidelines created by opinion leaders who are in the pocket of the pharmaceutical industry right. Right. who provide these guidelines. I mean, the, the, the last time I looked at the National Cholesterol Education Panel, Yes, for God's sake, there is such a thing. <laughs> there were nine members of the panel and 128 conflicts of interest between them all with companies that made far, uh, cholesterol-lowering agents. And those are just but, the ones that were disclosed. Well, I think they did disclose, whether well, they disclosed them all or not, but it was almost like, well, <laughs> it was every, com every company that made a statin. These people who were creating these guidelines had strong financial associations right. strong financial associations some of them were board members of pharmaceutical companies <laughs> and these were the people that are writing the guidelines it's like hello wake up it, world it's just uh, it's just astonishing it really is just astonishing uh